uh, division of the great state of North Dakota. Our friend Lynn Helms is back on the Common Sense Club. Lynn, how are you? I'm doing great this morning, Scott. Yourself? Wonderful. Appreciate your time very much. I couldn't come to the oil patch and, uh, and not talk to one of the great experts out there who's uh, been in this industry and who now is the top regulator in the state trying to manage this industry. And uh, I don't know if there's a bigger job in the industry anywhere on the planet because this is the epicenter of uh, oil development and really the talk of uh, the world as far as the oil industry is concerned, isn't it? Well, it certainly is, and uh, and you're right. It it has grown into a big job. We had a 22-page hearing docket yesterday, and uh, 23 pages uh, on the docket for today. So, the uh, activity isn't going to slow down anytime soon. Um, you're right. First big well in the North Dakota Bakken came in just south of there in uh, Partial Field in April of 2006, and uh, it's been an amazing ride since then. It sure has, and of course that was the uh, that was the the game changer of the technology. Some folks think horizontal fracking is new. Fracking's not new, but fracking combined with horizontal drilling is what made the Bach and uh, what it is, right? Boy, that's absolutely right. Uh, you know, neither one of those technologies is new. Fracking's been around sixty years, and horizontal drilling uh, almost thirty now. But it was the uh, the concept of being able to combine those two technologies that uh, that turned the Bach and on and. Uh, so we added another rig uh, yesterday. We're at 201 uh, on the North Dakota landscape. Every one of those uh, has generated 120 jobs. Uh, every one of those rigs standing out there is uh, pumping about a dollar a second into the North Dakota economy. And uh, that is a, an amazing phenomenon uh, for a state that uh, had 75 straight years of shrinking population to uh, turn the corner so quickly and now be back at the, you know those 1930 census numbers and uh, really be the envy of the nation. 201 rigs, which is an all-time record now, right, for the amount of rigs? Yes, sir, it sure is. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, uh, you know, based on the activity we're seeing uh, in the hearings and in the permitting area here, uh, we're expecting to exit the, the end of the year probably at 225 in that neighborhood. And... Uh, Maybe add another twenty-five over the first half of next year. So, uh, and what is amazing. what is possible? What is, what is what do you think ultimately is possible? What can we handle in the way of a, you know, additional activity? Where do you where do you see that high water mark, Lynn? Well, um, uh, I've kind of given up on predicting it. We have to grow our infrastructure in order to be able to uh, to add you know more drilling rigs and and more capacity to the oil patch. Uh, right now, we're pretty stretched to the limit at 201, but I'm confident that with the uh, construction that's going on out there and the, and the money the legislature sent out there for road building and for in infrastructure, that by, by this time next year we'll be able to handle 250 rigs, and, uh, and in another year we, we'll be able to handle 50 or 100 more. So, uh, um, you know, it's just, uh, I don't think it's going to go a lot higher than 250, uh, but I've been proven wrong before with with some of my estimates on rig count. Uh, they, there are no more spare rigs around the country uh, to import into North Dakota anymore, though. Uh, they're having to be built one at a time uh, and shipped here. So uh, that that will be somewhat of a restraint on uh, on the growth. And uh, the big restraint right now is, is fracking crews. Uh, there just aren't enough people and machines to frack all these wells as fast as they can drill them. So we're going to see a lot of growth in that area. Uh, you know, the Halliburtons and Slumberjays and Sand Gels. And I don't want to leave anybody out, but uh, those folks that, that pump the frack jobs, we're going to see uh, continuing growth in that area. It is absolutely extraordinary to watch unfold. And as you say, uh, you know, whether you're in the oil business, whether you're in a business that supports this kind of development, and there's uh, everything from, you know, people that serve food to, you know, do HVAC for a living or an electrician. I mean, there's so many ways that you ultimately can uh, can be, you know, part of this activity. Or whether you're, you know, just a North Dakota resident that sees that level of economic a activity, uh, it is lifting the, you know, uh, rising tide, as they say, lifts all, lifts all boats, and we're seeing that at play in a, in a big, big way when you talk about 201 rigs and that economic spinoff. Remember one of those, I think you said each one, uh, what, a buck a second or something? But, I mean, per yeah. rig, the amount of spinoff of jobs and economic activity is phenomenal. Yeah, and you're sitting in Stanley. Uh, you know, it's a, a perfect example of what that does to a, a local economy. Uh, the the main street in Stanley is now uh, 
really alive, uh, and, and it was It's a, alive in a, in a big years. way. Hang on a sec, Len. We, we're going to take a quick break, come back with more of our conversation with Len Helms on the Scott Hanna Show and the Common Sense Club, talk about a couple other things in the news. Live from the Senex in Stanley, North Dakota today, it's the Scott Hanna Show. Don't go away. I have bought a few bottles of heart and body extract and have to say that it, it certainly does work. That's what Jack from Michigan had to say after his experience with heart pain and what he did to treat it with heart and body extract. I actually had a huge heart flutter. I was also having some edema around my ankles and very worrisome clot in my uh, right leg that would happen from time to time while I was trying to sleep. Heart and body extract is all natural with no negative side effects. It will help repair or correct past problems associated with the heart and body circulation. After my second bottle of heart and body extract, all problems are now gone. Order at hbextract.com or call 866-295-5305. I ordered a third bottle of Heart and Body Extract for maintenance as I want to keep everything working. Order Heart and Body Extract at 866-295-5305 or hbextract.com. Heart and Body Extract for a long and healthy life. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. Before you throw away your used batteries, you need to listen to this. Now, going green can save money. Go green and save money by giving life to your used batteries by charging them with the Renaissance Charger. The Renaissance Charger uses a new revolutionary battery charging technology that effectively extends the life of new batteries and gives new life to used batteries. Invented by legendary audio genius John Bedini, this unique and patented charging system rejuvenates the electrochemical plate structure in the battery without additives, increasing capacity and maintaining cell integrity. Renaissance Charge offers a full line of products made in the USA for all types and sizes of batteries. Find out why our customers tell us the Renaissance Charger is the only battery charger they will ever use. Save your money. Save the environment. Visit us online at r-charge.com. That's r-charge.com. Or call us at 208-772-4514. That's 208-772-4514. Be a part of the revolution today. Hey, Brian, if you could do just one thing today to ensure your family's food security, what would it be? That's easy, Bill. I'd head straight to SoupBeanSurvival.com. SoupBeanSurvival.com? I know, Bill, it sounds crazy, but this ancient secret has been around for over 8,000 years, and it truly is nature's super survival food. Really, Brian, the number one survival food? Well, certainly the forgotten survival food. Absolutely, Bill. The folks at SoupBeanSurvival.com scoured our planet to find the very best heirloom seeds to truly find nature's super survival food. Brian, these aren't grocery store beans, are they? No way, Bill. You're not going to find these beans in any grocery store. These are the absolute highest quality beans in the world. Visit SoupBeanSurvival.com. That's SoupBeanSurvival.com survival.com for all the information you're going to need for nature's super survival food. Back on the Common Sense Club and the Scott Hinton Show, by the way, uh, Dick Cheney, the author of In My Time, the former vice president who's uh, shaken up Washington with his uh, memoir, joins us on tomorrow's Common Sense Club. Questions for him. Welcome on our Facebook page with scotthannon.com slash live, or just call now and ask your question for him, and we'll, uh, we'll play your voice asking Dick Cheney a question when you call us at 
two zero zero seventeen seventy six. That's on the Scott line. You just press number two, put you right to our uh, Scott line, and you can ask your questions. We continue our conversation with uh, Lynn Helms, who's the director of the State Department of Mineral Resources in uh, North Dakota, and we're talking about a record year. Uh, North Dakota is on pace. Correct me if I'm wrong. To set an all-time production record, but not just by a little bit, by a lot, right, Lynn? Well, that's for sure. Yeah, we're uh, um, the uh, official production. Well, of course, was June 385,000 barrels a day, but we know that we're well above that. Um, we, we think we're comfortably into the 400,000 plus barrel a day range, and so uh, we're going to we're going to see a uh, 25% growth over last year's uh, production numbers. And uh, the prices have, have remained strong. I, I think industry actually was a bit relieved to see prices edge back down in, uh, towards that $85 number. The, this pocket uh, has fantastic economics between $75 and $90 a barrel. And so, uh, they, you know, they'd rather see uh, n- not have those super high prices that hurt world demand. Yeah, exactly, because uh, there's, there's a sweet spot there, so to speak, no pun intended, that's, uh, that's very important. Uh, you know, um, what I'm amazed at with this record production that we're talking about in 2011 that you'll end with, you know, somewhere north of 130 million barrels, up about, uh, you know, just shy 20% from the record that was just last year, uh, is uh, the incredibly tough winter. I mean, I remember talking on the air uh, to folks from Williston who were saying, hey, they're killing us. They're shutting down these roads. We, we, we the oil industry shut down. That happened for a good week. You had all the mm-hmm. flooding issues. You really had one tough winter, one of the toughest in a long time, that was just pounding this industry, right? Boy, that's for sure. Uh, you know, we we had record snowfall last winter, and and it was just a struggle uh, from early December on, and then uh, spring. It, it was a spring that never seemed to want to end, and uh, so we we had wet, wet conditions and. That affected our ag industry, of course, tremendously, but it had the same kind of effects on the oil and gas industry, just impossible to move rigs and men and machines like we'd like to. So we've seen a huge surge once we finally dried out in July, and uh, that's going to continue as long as we have nice weather. So uh, we'll, we expect to be breaking records uh, about every week uh, as, as we move into the, these nice fall days. Yeah, you know, uh, what, is, what is extraordinary to me is the resiliency of this industry. When you think about what, the, what this industry is up against from a regulatory standpoint, from a, I'm, I'm speaking mainly of, uh, of federal regulation and some of the designs and plans to you know, take on fossil fuels, taxation, constantly saying, let's single out oil companies, raise their taxes, and uh, we, we have a new chapter. Uh, now we have uh, the Obama Justice Department, the U.S. Attorney in North Dakota, despite the challenges we just talked about this uh, winter, over a 45-day period, right in the middle of the worst flooding, May to June, uh, they actually uh, found 28 birds uh, between seven different sites and are criminally charging oil companies who will have to go to court in September and uh, defend themselves over this. Uh, Is this another example of uh, the administration's war on oil, Lynn? Well, I I think it does uh, express an anti-oil attitude from Washington, D.C., and uh, it certainly is not the way that we operate here in the state of North Dakota. I think our business climate is more one of education and, uh, um, you know, obviously we don't take these things lightly, though. Uh, If we have somebody that uh, is an obvious violator of state laws and and rules and regulations, we crack down on them. Uh, But the, the sentiment from the federal government is certainly anti-oil. And uh, that, of all things, should point out that it's running in the opposite direction of what can make the economy tick. And by the way, this this is like you say; these are responsible companies care about the environment as much as we do. They're very, you know, they, they don't they don't like these kind of headlines. They don't want the, the, this to dominate the news. I mean, last week, good example: you had uh, Jim Cramer from CNBC out here giving international attention to the economic game changer this is, trying to tell the rest of the country, "Hey, domestic energy production can fuel your economy." A day later, I don't believe any coincidence, our U.S. attorney, top law enforcement officials, criminally charges oil companies over twenty-eight birds. Now. Uh, 
uh, should should uh, should uh, oil companies do everything to protect the wildlife that's out there? Of course, and they do. And just traditionally, they've worked with the Fish and Wildlife Service with these issues, and it's never been criminal. I mean, that's what uh, it is unprecedented here. I mean, these these companies are responsible when it comes to these sites and managing the wildlife by and large. Uh, Lynn, are they not? I mean, this this problem isn't in need of criminal prosecution, is it? Yeah, I uh, you know I can't really speak to the timing of the thing, but I, I would agree. I don't think that it's a uh, a criminal problem from the standpoint of uh, it doesn't seem like it should be a strict liability type of a violation. Uh, we do have fencing and netting rules, and uh, you know if the companies really tried, if they fenced and netted those pits and and still had bird deaths, well, that ought to be taken into consideration. So uh, um, it seems a little out of line with the uh, weight or severity of the violations. But, uh, um, you know, it, it is what it is, and, and I think it does express a, uh, a federal angst over oil and gas production, which we shouldn't have in this country. Our 95% of our transportation fuel comes from the petroleum industry. And, uh, yes, someday we've got to transition to something else, but uh, we just can't simply shut it off and have any kind of an economy left. Well, and again, speaking of the economy, look at North Dakota. Fastest job growth, lowest unemployment, economic boom, lessons for the rest of the country from domestic energy production, uh, and at a time when the rest of the country is in a horrible financial condition. Uh, look, this shouldn't be tough to say, let's not punish them. Let's not go after them. Let's not target them. Let's do everything in our power to unleash this activity, which you know creates jobs at about twice the national average. This is why I scratch my head, Lynn. Well, I do too, Scott. Um, you know, I think there there are a lot about economics and uh, and about politics is timing, and uh, and so you you have to look at uh, you know setting your priorities and and doing the right thing for uh, for job creation and job growth at the right time. And uh, this is one industry uh, that is on its feet and creating jobs and creating uh, a lot of economic benefit for North Dakota and for the United States right now. So uh, we should be fostering and encouraging it. And uh, I'm, keeps, I'm afraid, what, 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 uh, you know, in Washington, D.C., we're not doing that. Exactly right. Uh, just a couple of minutes left with uh, Lynn Helms. We're live in Stanley, North Dakota at the Cynics today. Montreal County epicenter of the oil development from the North Dakota Petroleum Council Studios. NDOil.org to find out more. Just a minute left, Lynn, but I'm curious. Uh, what keeps you up at night? What worries you? With all this good, all the wonderful things that are happening, what are the storm clouds you see on the horizon? Well, uh, you know, my main concerns are uh, um, risks for the Bach and play that come from inside the Beltway. Uh, we see continuing effort for federal regulation of hydraulic fracturing, which is uh, unnecessary and, and unwanted. Um, states have been regulating it for 60 years, and uh, nobody can can nail down any time that it's contaminated groundwater. So uh, uh, we ought to get off beating that drum. And then the new challenge that's kind of coming over, over the horizon is uh, these air permits and air quality. And... Uh, we just we just had a you know a wake up call on Fort Berthold Reservation right south of, uh, of you there. It's that uh, it, it, you know. a- absolutely incredible. Unfortunately, we're out of time. We're going to keep this conversation going the coming days and months. But both the legitimate worries, the risk is from Washington.